Welcome to Made in Miami, where we're interviewing small business owners that have their businesses here and are thriving in Miami. Every month we'll be interviewing another small business to give you insights on how they're making it in Miami. Today, we're going to be talking with Chris and Claire from Frameworks. So would you two introduce yourselves, the name of your company, and the best way for people to find you? Um, our company is Frameworks. The best way to find us is FrameworksMiami.com. Uh, my name is Chris Sweeney. I'm one of the founders and co-owners of Frameworks. My name is Claire Lardner. I'm the other founder of Frameworks, located in Miami. We have two locations, one in Coconut Grove and one in the Bird Road Art District. Great. Okay, so can you tell me why and how you started this business? Why I started this business was I believed that having a business that made a difference in people's lives was what life should be about. Um, that I didn't care what I made, I cared about who I was about how I made things. Mm -hmm. um, so I researched um, living I was living in New York City at the time and researched um, businesses and on a wing and a prayer and a MasterCard, spent a week in a frame shop in Key West and then opened my doors in Miami um, and fully believed that I could make it work, which obviously 30 years later, um, we have. Yeah. Great. So then when did you join the company? I joined the, I joined the company in 1995 and we decided that between the two of us, we could actually grow the business more and make more of an impact, particularly in Coconut Grove. Yeah, great. So tell me a little bit about the products and services that you offer. What do you guys do? Frameworks is an art sourcing, picture framing, printing company. We have 25 people employed from being the creative director, creating artwork, putting it, uh, printing it on paper, plexiglass, whatever material, down to uh, framing it. For our hospitality clients, our two locations also have uh, residential uh, custom framing that does anything from museum to low-end framing. In a nutshell, we're a full art and framing fabrication company. Wow. <laughs> you know, I was over at your, at your place the other day and some of the photographs that you were showing me, like people come with their artwork to actually be fabricated, whether it gets printed on aluminum or on a canvas or even on wallpaper, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've, had, um, we've had people in our business who've been with us for over 20 years and the people that are behind the counter have the experience of being able to work with you on creating a design that gives you the wow factor when people walk into your house. Like, you know, when I go into your frame shop with something to be framed, I just go, here, what do you think? And they always do a magnificent job. I don't even know if you saw the last piece they did for me, but it was brilliant. Uh, did you see it with I the mermaid? Yeah. Okay, great. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So do you think that you were destined to be in this business? Well, obviously, because that's where I am. <laughs> I mean, there's like... Yeah, for me, there's no question. Mm -hmm. I mean, had you asked me 30 years ago if I would end up here, I couldn't see that path for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we've uh, really trusted our intuition as owners and continued to have built the business and made decisions and investment decisions mm -hmm. um, in a way that maybe doesn't follow an exact script or the way you're supposed to do it, um, but we didn't really care. <laughs> right? A lot of fun along the way, right? Well, <laughs> sometimes. Right. Yeah. So what would you say is the biggest challenge of this business? Of this business or business? Well, of this business. 
Well, I, I think the, the challenge for me personally is having to get up every day and continue to be inspired and continue to lead in a way that people want to participate now that the company's grown, that, that the team wants to be there. You know, how do I need to do that after 30 years of doing the same thing and mm -hmm. do it um, that inspires people to want to follow what we've created? And what is the most challenging thing for you? The most Money. <laughs> That's all right. The most challenging thing is to get our name out there. Most people don't, that we want to do business with, don't know our complete capabilities. And it's getting our reputation outsourced to other people. Once somebody has come to work with us and they realize who we are and our capabilities, but more who we are, they tend to stay with us forever. Um, but as one of our, our clients said, we're the best kept secret. Mm. So I, in, in my experience, like, there are people who, who know you, but they may not know the full scope of what you do, even the way you explained it. Fabrication, what does that mean? They, they would know you can cut wood and make words and you know, print on anything, even the wallpaper or the, or the hospital wallpaper that's bacteria free. And, um, and so there's just so many things, it's almost hard to know the full scope of everything that you all can do. What's the most interesting project that you've done recently? I would say one of the most interesting projects we did was for a uh, property, a hotel property in one of the islands where uh, the designer came to us with a crazy idea that they wanted to put sort of like an abstract interpretation of a map and incorporate it into the headboard with lights. Okay, so that was the concept they came to us with. And we actually ended up uh, cutting out the islands and putting plexiglass on the back so it could be reverse lit. So they were hand, the, the, they were hand finished boards, um, five foot by 10 foot, which is pretty big to work in. So I think that we did something like 50 of those. Oh my um, God. <laughs> and then they, and they actually built them into the wall as the headboard. And they um, just came out exquisite. But again, completely outside of what you would conceive as a frame shop. Absolutely. Which is, you know, where we began. Yeah. Do you have a favorite project? The same. Yeah? It was really cool. Yeah. Okay, good. So what's an obstacle that you've overcome in the business and how did you overcome it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would... like the, the obstacle was losing our youngest daughter to suicide. Um, and as any survivor will tell you, the gut wrench of that and what you do with your life and it is your life worth going forward and then realizing at the same time that you have a business to run and that you have to find a way deep down to run it um, and then realizing that the people that are with you because they're in your business culture they actually want to help you and they love you enough that they will pick themselves up even in their pain because their pain is your pain. Um, they will find a way to help you. And that's been our biggest struggle is coming back from the death of our daughter. I would agree. Yeah. yeah. If you could start the business all over again, what would you do differently? <laughs> I'm not sure I would. <laughs> like I said, a wing and a prayer and a MasterCard. <laughs> I, I, you know, when people, people actually ask us frequently about starting businesses, um, and I'm really a devil's advocate. Um, I, it takes a lot of courage and um, a stick to itness and a unwilling, you have to be willing to do literally whatever it takes to survive. Um, and it's not easy. It is not easy. Um, there were, uh, many, many, many weeks and time periods where employees got paid and vendors didn't and making those kinds of decisions and trying to sleep at night with that. It's not, it's just not easy. Not to, not to say people shouldn't do it, but I went in, you know, ignorance was bliss. Yes. In the sense I <laughs> really too. had no idea, <laughs> you know, and uh, my, I feel like our 
strength and courage as human beings have allowed us to, you know, be successful. Because without that, it's very, very difficult, especially over such a long period of time. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to add to that? Yeah. People, when we were in Coconut Grove, uh, having the store there, we would see people open up businesses and they would open up a business and think, well, I'm open, people will come. And they don't realize the financial struggles, the emotional struggles that are there. And they have to have the fortitude and the belief in themselves, or if you have a partner in the partner, that you can get through it. Um, people just, because you open the door, they don't come. Right. <laughs> You've got it's not like that movie, right? It's not, <laughs> no, it's not like that movie. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the same as the movies. And, and so if people want to start a business, they have to take a really hard look at themselves. Do they have the ability to withstand the struggles and the emotional roller coaster? Uh, there's always a roller coaster. It's never smooth sailing. Um, because if it's smooth sailing, that means your business is not needed because the world's gone past you. You always have to keep reinventing yourselves and that's the struggle that I think a lot of businesses forget. They forget to reinvent themselves. They think, oh, I've got my business model. I mean, it's, it's good, it's stagnant, I don't need to do anything. And that's when people leave you. Uh, you always have to keep reinventing um, and looking for ways to engage your client or your customer. Well, that was beautiful, Claire, because you know after the recession, many people, even the, the best business people in the world lost their businesses. And that, business model and the ability to shift and innovate is what kept many of the small businesses going. You know, they were able to, they were scrappy enough to be able to go in there and, and do whatever it took, as you said. As business owners and entrepreneurs, you have to juggle many things. How do you keep focused? Or how do you get refocused if you've lost your focus? We call our business coach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's a good structure. We call ours too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is absolutely one of the tools in our toolbox. Yeah. For sure. Okay. The same thing. If you don't have outside people to look at your business, then again, you're, you've got blinders on. You're not looking at the whole thing. Um, you have to have an outside source, whether it's a business coach, um, a friend, a competitor, somebody that can turn to you and say, your eye's not on the ball or this is what you're missing. Um, because that again is going to the reinventing yourself. Because again, if you just, you can't just sit on your, on your chair and just bury your head on the desk, it won't work. Yeah, that Kaizen concept of constant never ending improvement and innovation. And I think, I mean, one of the other things for me is when I feel like that we're stuck or there's a source of friction is sometimes it takes just getting in the trenches mm -hmm. and put, getting the car to move up the hill a little bit or the rock, <laughs> you know, to actually get in the trenches. Um, mm -hmm. And again, as we've grown and added more layers of, in our team, sometimes it doesn't feel like you should be doing that. Well, you know, one of the things that I find with clients is they'll resist having team meetings you know, like we don't have time for that we're too busy but you've been pretty religious about your Absolutely. meetings and can you say a little bit about that well i i feel like um i don't think our meetings are a waste of time i think they're a fundamental um, forum for different departments to be in communication about what's happening so and i am absolutely of believe that you have to do it consistently. You just can't miss. Um, because once you start missing, it allows for it to not be meaningful or matter. Mm -hmm. So um, we just, we build them into our schedule for the team and they're just as important as other learning tools or working hard. Mm -hmm. right, so here's a fun question. If you only had a thousand dollars to invest in the business, where would you invest it? Another piece of equipment. Okay. That doesn't begin to scratch the surface of our equipment. <laughs> well, I did, uh, so $1,000 in uh -huh. the scope of what we do is very minuscule. Right. So it's hard for me to think 
that a thousand dollars could make a huge impact. Mm -hmm. um, so if I was looking to, I probably put it towards doing something with the team. Mm -hmm. You know, whether we go out for beer, or we, you know, something that would make a difference for the, for the entire team. Mm -hmm. An event, a moment. Yeah. And Claire, what would you say? I would have to agree that it would have to be related to the team because a thousand dollars doesn't even buy one of our computers. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, if when the times are tough, like when we hit the recession, um, if the team is behind you, they will be behind you no matter what, and will stick with you through the ups and the downs. But if you don't have the team, they'll walk away. And so anything that you can do to get the team to believe in themselves, the team members to believe in themselves and, and to with each other. And I'll go back to the meetings that you were talking to Chris about. We have different divisions. We have production, we have creative, and we have mm -hmm. residential or custom. If you didn't have intergroup meetings, Custom would have no idea what creative is doing. Creative would have no idea what production. And this allows everybody to get to know one another. And then if one group is overworked, creative or custom will chip in and say, hey, I, I've got somebody that can help you. So it gets everybody to treat everybody as a human being versus a coworker. Mm, beautiful. If you could give me a, a description of your business in just three words, what would they be? Both of you. Humans. <laughs> it's a human resource. We're, we're Innovation. Team. The termination. And what's the three words for you? Team and what? Um, they're basically the same. I mean, we're nowhere without the team. We're nowhere without our innovation. And we're nowhere without going after the work. So it's determination. I think it's limitless possibilities. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Relentless pursuit yeah. of excellence. Yeah. So it's more than three words and it was really great. <laughs> okay. All right, so what advice would you give to someone who's starting out in business? Jump. Mm. Yeah. If you don't believe in yourself and you are not willing to take a risk, um, then don't go into the business. Mm -hmm. But you have to trust yourself. And if you don't, as Chris said, jump, you'll never grow. Yeah. And so what uh, is the best thing about being in business in Miami? Best thing about being in business in Miami is the has been the extraordinary privilege and honor of the thousands and thousands of people that we've been able to interact and engage with, and in particular, um, to see the impact on the people in our lives. Yeah. You know that whether it was selling a frame or you know giving a kid a job who didn't have a chance. Um, to see that ripple effect is how the world changes. Yeah. What's the best thing about doing business in Miami for you, Claire? Um, I think what I found was when we lost our daughter, um, the number of people who were, we had touched came to give us support, um, whether it was family, friends, but a lot of our clients and customers who we've known over the years, there was such an outpouring of love and support um, that I think it would be really hard to find elsewhere in the country. Yeah. Well, you're certainly a gift to the city of Miami, the two of you as human beings and your business and your team, because you have an extraordinary team. It's amazing what you all get done. <laughs> it really is. So thank you for being here this morning and taking your time for this interview. And that's Made in Miami.